Hey guys, what's up? Thank you so much for tuning in today here at Elevate Church. We know that today's message is going to rock your world and elevate your life to the next level. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the message. We just got back today, and let me tell you something. For those parents that sent their kids to camp, thank you so much for believing in them. Thank you for believing in the mission that God has for Elevate Church and uh, partnering with you as a parent to help you raise them. Not that it's our responsibility, but we feel like there is a burden for us to help you carry together and seeing them fulfill everything God's called them to do. And uh, your kids were amazing except for two. I'm gonna tell, can, I tell, can I tell on some kids tonight? Okay, let me, let me show you a video of something that I was so shocked. I, it was so bad. I said, you know what? For you girls doing this, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put it on blast. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. All right, so relax, parents. <laughs> they're like, they're wondering, is it my child? Is it my child? <laughs> it possibly could be. But watch this real quick. Look at this craziness. amazing yes so the parents of those two wonderful girls don't trip they were good they were amazing they were amazing every single youth was amazing you know what was really funny where's Raul Raul where are you at Raul where's Raul okay all of our other male youth leaders George Isaac they were all like freaking out like Stephen do you see Stephen Raul comes in very cool in the name of Jesus you will stop right now did you see that? Rewind the video. Show, show that real quick. He comes in. He walks in. He runs in. Forward a little bit. There you go. Look at him. He's He's going to every youth camp. Hey, that just shows you how spiritual we are. You know, we don't just handle things in the physical. We also go spiritual. So, Raul, thank you for praying. Somebody was praying. No, but I honestly want to, um, to say thank you to, to also those, um, those wonderful people at Elevate Church that help sponsor uh, many of our youth. Uh, we we want to be so grateful to you and thankful. And you know who you are because I see some of you out there. Let me tell you what you did. What you did is uh, you, you, you not only gave something that was tangible money-wise, but you literally planted a seed that is going to carry on in someone's life. You you gave into a life, not into a program. And uh, and for that, I want to say thank you so much for every single one of you that said, you know what, I'll sponsor. My wife and I, we sponsored as well. And, uh, and we know that we're not just giving money. We're sowing into lives. We're sowing into change. We're sowing into the future of the youth. We believe in them. We thank God for them. And we know that it's just the beginning. And, and guess what? Next year, my goal, I've got to figure it out. I want to take them to Big Bear next year. But we want to take at least 150 youth next year in Jesus' name, 150. We took 80 this year, 150 next year. So let's believe for that, and it's going to be awesome. All right. I have some speakers with us tonight. So tonight is a youth takeover. Didn't the youth do amazing leading worship tonight? Wasn't that awesome? We need more of that. Can I get that arrow, please? I want to read something to you. I want you to look at Psalms 127.4, and then I'm going to have them come up and share. But I want to just lay a little foundation. And we apologize for some of the leaders. And hey, you guys standing way back there, if you guys want to sit on the floor over here, you're more than welcome to. If you want to stand, you can stand. We apologize uh, for not having enough seats. But uh, one seven one. Psalm 127, verse 4. 
before I read this verse, I want you to just look at this verse with me and realize that you're going to find this amazing statement that David, now you're talking about King David. David was, was anointed by God when he was a youth to do some really great exploits for God. He was about 13 years old when, when he was anointed to be king. And, of course, we know that it took like a bazillion years for him to finally get to that place for a lot of reasons. But when you look at the verse I'm about to read, I want you to understand the first part of the, the main part of what I'm going to share with you tonight. You can put that up, please. Psalm 127, verse 3, please. Look at this. It says, Behold. Now, he's talking to us parents. How many parents do I have in the house tonight? Let me see your hand, parents. You guys are awesome. Give them a big hand. Youth, you guys should give them a big hand for sending you to youth camp. Come on, show them some love. It says, Behold, children are a heritage from the Lord. The fruit of the womb is a reward. Like arrows in the hand of a warrior, so are the children of one's youth. I love this. And leave that verse up there, please. Because when you look at this verse, I want you to know that the psalmist is referring to your child as an arrow. David is saying, your child is an arrow. My children, Isaac, Alexis, they are an arrow in our hand. And we have a responsibility with that arrow. And notice that an arrow is not something cute, right? An arrow is something that is used as a weapon. It's not just to be put on a display. It's not just to create this amazing looking arrow and then just think that it's going to just sit inside of a quiver and it's never going to do anything. David is saying to you and I as parents is we have a responsibility to realize that in our quiver is an arrow and that arrow is our child, our youth. And for those of you that don't have youth yet and you have little ones, Right now, you have a God responsibility to start shaping and forming that arrow. Now, mind you, this arrow has three different parts. It's got the, uh, the feather, it's got the shaft, and then it's got the point. And so think about it. You as a parent have a responsibility to make sure that this shaft is straight. If this shaft is not straight, this thing is not going to make its destination. If this thing is not created the way God designed it to be created, I mean, it's in the Bible. So obviously God wants us to create something so incredibly beautiful, but it's going to take work to get this thing straight. Our job as parents is to help create a straight way for our kids. Our job is to strengthen the arrow so that this arrow can go straight, so that this arrow can go far we want to make sure that we are also making sure that this, this shaft represents their identity, right? Think about it. We live in a society where these, these guys right here, man, their culture is harder than most of ours when we were growing up. You think we had it hard? No, they have it harder. They're harder to reach in this generation. But it's not impossible when we have parents that love God, that, man, if your kid says, I want to stay home, you're the, you're the parent, not them. And you're like, we're going to church, and nothing's going to stop us from going to church. And whether you like it or not, and trust me, I had a lot of conversations with them. You're going. Why? Because I'm making crooked places straight. The feather is also super important. You can have a straight shaft, which is their identity, knowing who they are. But let me tell you something. But these feathers, these are so important. These feathers is what sustains the arrow in the air. Without these feathers, this shaft would just go straight down. So we have to understand that these feathers is what will sustain them. Let me tell you something. God is the only one that can sustain your child in this lifetime right now. God is the only one that can sustain them when they're facing real struggles in school, when there is temptation, when there is peer pressure, when there is anxiety, when there is depression, the feather of God, come on, the protection of God will sustain them in every season of their life. So we have to develop that feather. It's so important to us. We must develop that feather. And then the point, the point is the mission. Because guess what? The point is the only thing that's going to hit the target. So we have a responsibility 
to make sure that as parents, that we are sharpening the ax, that we are sharpening the point. In other words, you as a parent, it's not just drive them to school, bring them home, eat food, watch TV, play video games, hang out, and do the same thing. It's already at this moment at a, your, your daughter's what, she's three now? Four years old. Four years old, already giving them a mission for God. You're not waiting till they're 15. You're not waiting till they're 18. If you have waited, well, it's not too late. Do something. If your child's 30 years old, oh, well, it's too late. <laughs> but you have a responsibility to sharpen the point. And that point has to have a mission. There's no such thing. Arrows aren't created just to stand by. Arrows are created to be sent off. And your job as a parent is to send them off one day. But you want to prepare them. Amen? So what I want to do, I'm not, I'm not, I better stop because then I'll preach and then it's going to be not good. I have some amazing people that are going to share. I'm going to start with uh, the younger group and because uh, I got like eight of them talking. Let's start with, um, let me call you up. Amaya White, Shannon Brady, Patty Robles, Jenny Cardenas. Come on up quickly. Come on up. Give it up for these young girls. So I asked each one to just share what their experience was like because how many know that watching our kids from worship to uh, our kids doing a little dance piece, which they just did that at youth camp, and the youth super loved it, and we, we love to, to bring out the gift and the talents out of every youth, but to also give them the opportunity to also share. And I want them to share. Who wants to go first? You do. Okay, look at Patty's like, man, I'll go first. <laughs> okay, Patty, introduce yourself. Tell them who you are. Uh, hi, I'm Patty Robles. I'm 13, and um, I'm going into eighth grade. So before I went to camp, I was feeling really depressed and alone. I felt like I was all alone. I had no one to talk to. My relationship with God was nothing at the time. I didn't want to pray. I didn't want to read my Bible. And I was even scared to go to church. I didn't come on Wednesdays, and um, I only went to one service on Sundays. Um, I felt like I was abandoning all my responsibilities, and like I wasn't helping at the Ivory Life Cafe. I felt so ashamed to come to church because I felt like I was abandoning everything. But when I went to church, everything changed. The worship was amazing, and I truly felt in God's presence and in his love. He gave me... Um, an idea to start a Bible club at my school to help other youth that are struggling as well. He gave me the courage not to be afraid of what people thought. I've always been really nervous about that and self-conscious, but when I was there and I was in his love, I felt like none of that mattered, and I was able to go up to the altar without anyone caring. I was able to kneel and raise my hands, and I felt free and in his love. And so I recommend if you have a youth, send them to youth camp. Send them to the, the uh, service we have. It's amazing, and it will truly change your life. Thank awesome. You. Thank you so much. Amaya, go ahead, girl. Hello, I'm Amaya White, Noel White. But um, before I went to Elevate uh, Church, I was... I felt hopeless. I felt like I wasn't going to make any friends. I felt lonely and depression and fear. But then when I went to a church for the first time, um, they, uh, my friends that I do have now, but I used to not have them, <laughs> but <laughs> they let me in and included me into things that I have never experienced. So then that got me really excited. And then then so on and so forth. Um, nowadays, I went to camp, and then I felt depressed again. I felt like I was going through t so many things in my mind, and I couldn't even control it. I felt like that. But like when the service went on, I felt like I could give it all to God because that what the song was saying. So after that. I was like, I think I, I think I know what I'm doing, so I'm gonna just give it all to God, just let it all go, and go to bed. I'll go to bed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right, like 4 a.m. <laughs> Weren't you one of the culprits going to sleep like two, three, four in the morning? Sure, won't do that. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, great job. Give her a big hand. Thank you so much. <laughs> Shannon, go ahead, girl. Okay, my name is Shannon Brady, and I'm in sixth grade. 
Uh, my time at camp has been the most wonderful. My c- connection with God has been stronger than ever. For example, my hardships were solved through God. Before I went to camp, I didn't really know what I was meant to do, but I felt God when I was wor- wo- when I was worshiping. I felt as if God was in my heart and wanted to do something in my life. Camp has been one of the most God-connecting moments of my life. Elevate Youth has truly made an impact on my life, and I am so grateful to have been part of this wonderful experience. My impact on my life hit me in camp. I found comfort with friends that I met and some that I met now. Camp has been the most wonderful place I've ever been to. Elevate Youth is truly a God-connecting moment and activity, and I'm so grateful to have been there. We love you, Shannon. You're awesome. Thank you so much. All right, Janet, name, age, go ahead. Hi, my name is Janet, and I'm 11 years old, and I'm going to sixth grade. And recently, I had financial problems with my family, and and we could, it was hard. I really wanted to go to camp. It, it was so, the money was so up, so I didn't know if I was gonna go or not. And once I found out that Lexi could could work out with my aunt about the money problems, and I was able to go to camp and it was, so so good and it was so I met new friends there. Awesome. Give it up for these girls one more time. I'm super proud of you guys. Come here. Uh, 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 I give head hugs. Go ahead, have a seat, girls. You guys are awesome. Thank you so much. You guys did phenomenal. Hey, can you guys preach for me this Sunday? Can you guys handle that? Yeah, yes, yes. Okay, great. All right, Uh, the next group of people I have is going to share with you for five minutes each, or or at least up to five, maybe shorter. Uh, Let me start with Case and Coley. Where you at, man? Hey. Do do, do me a favor. Can you work on your energy, man? You just, you need a little bit more energy. I'm you sorry, I went to energy. bed at like 4 a.m. at camp, I'm sorry. <laughs> just a little bit. Wasn't I'll this guy amazing on. as a host today? What the heck? It's just like, hey, guys. Hey. <laughs> that whole thing. <laughs> Go ahead, Kaysen. All right, all right, what's up, everybody? So uh, my name is Kaysen. Uh, I'm 18. I, I just graduated. and um, So, uh, yeah, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, that was, that was tough work, not going to lie. All right, so going into camp, um, I only really had like two expectations. The first one was to uh, get closer to the boys, of course, and uh, hey, let's go! <laughs> and um, the second one was to um, experience God in a new way. Um, but also going into it, I felt like um, I got too used to the way that things were going. I, uh, it felt like it was just a cycle, just going over and over again. You know, go, pray, worship, um, you know, hear the message, go home, sleep, that kind of thing. And I got so much into this cycle that I started draining myself. But I was still excited for camp because I knew that I was going to be experiencing, you know, God in a new way because, you know, I'm out in the wilderness with uh, no reception and uh, <laughs> no, no parents. And um, So during um, worship the first night, um, pastor came up to us on the worship team and he was saying, um, he said, call down onto the Holy Spirit and ask for a name and ask for a word. So that's what I did is I was praying to God. I was like, God, please give me a name. Please give me a face and give me a word to say for them. And the Holy Spirit answered. And I was able to go out and and to, um, you know, seek out faces and seek out people and give them something that they needed to hear from God. And it was very freeing for those people. And it was awesome, you know, to feel that power just flow through me. But I felt like I was, I was missing something. I almost felt like I was empty and I was confused why, um, because I allowed God to move through me and I was worshiping and I was speaking life into people and chains were breaking and it was, it was awesome. But I had to come to this realization that 
these people, yeah, they have problems, but I have them too. And I got into this place where I got so comfortable with pushing away my problems that I fooled myself into thinking that they weren't there. And I have all these problems just floating around and flowing around, and I didn't know what to do. So as many of you guys know, a calling of mine is to uh, go into the entertainment industry as a screenwriter and director. And I've had this calling on me since I was, uh, I think it was seventh grade. Yeah, seventh grade. And um, right now I'm going through a season of transition from high school to college to in front of the camera to behind the camera. And I'd be lying to you if I said I was not scared out of my mind. Um, because a lot of the time, I get so scared of what's to come because I don't know what's about to happen and that frightens me. I doubt myself. Maybe I'm not good enough for this. Maybe I'm not supposed to be doing this. Maybe I'm not worth it enough. And in conclusion, I was in somewhat of a funk. <laughs> um, see, like I was saying before, how I fooled myself into not being able to see it because there was a shadow that was over me. But how do many of you guys know that no matter where you go, he's still going to find you where you are. Come on. Very he's going to find you where you are. <laughs> Unfortunately, it took me all the way till this morning to figure that out. So during our, our, our worship session this morning, um, we did something different. We had all the leaders come up into the front. And they did this uh, little tunnel thing where they were on either side, and then students would walk through, and they would pray over them. And it was really cool to see, but I was up playing the drums up on the stage, and I was, you know, just playing around and, uh, you know, making sure it sounded good. But one thought kept coming into my head, get in the line, get in the line, get in the line. So I went. I went and I got in the line. I was like, okay, God, I hear you. I'm here. So I went in the line. And um, one of my leaders, uh, Isaac, he um, started laying hands on me and started praying. And then he paused for a moment. I was tripping out a little bit because I didn't know what he was about to say, because like I said, I didn't see my problems, I wasn't thinking about my problems, and I didn't tell anybody my problems, because I was keeping it in. And the first thing that he said was, Kason, God wants you to know that he hears your prayers and that they will be answered. And he started saying things like how God was proud of me of what I was doing, and that this fear and doubt would subside because God's plan is about to be in full motion. He started speaking life over these issues that I have never spoken about. I've never spoken about him to anybody because I kept him so suppressed because I didn't want it to be real. And over, and during that time, I felt humility. I felt humility because I needed to get out of the way of myself and step into that calling. And that's when um, I got this verse that I've always lived on. It's called, it's Ephesians 4.1. It says, live a life worthy of your calling. If you have doubt and fear over your calling, I want to encourage you with this. Pause. And remember that this is only temporary. Don't run away from the storm. Run into the storm. Go through it. Very good. Because as soon as you run away from it, it's going to keep chasing you. It's going to prolong it. Come on. Very good. I want to end with this. Everyone has a story. And everyone's story deserves to be told. If you have a gift, a talent, a calling, be confident in it. And don't let yourself live with this doubt. Let it go. Because you do have the power to do it. And I want to end with this, uh, this scripture right here, uh, Psalm 27, 13 through 14. It says, I remain confident of this. I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord. Be strong. Take heart. And wait for him. Awesome. Great job, man. Proud of you. Proud of you. Our next person is going to be, now let me tell you a little bit about this guy. Josh is super new to our youth ministry. And, uh, and let me tell you something. This, this kid would probably get the MVP award of, of leadership. He stepped up to the plate. Um, he helped. This guy is, I, when you hear how old he is, I'm, he didn't even look his age. And then you hear him talk and hang out with you. It's like, man, am I talking to a grown man? Who am I talking to here? But he's the most awesome, and you can see how much God has grown him. It's amazing. God is accelerating something amazing in his life. And so tonight, help me welcome Josh Lopez. Come on, Josh. Welcome, man. Hey, guys, how's it going? 
Good, good, good. Yeah, that's good. My name is Joshua Lopez. I'm 15 years old. I just want to first off talk about my my expectations going into camp. My expectations weren't really to grow closer to people. It's because I already had that in me. It was really just to go closer to the Lord and step out of my comfort zone with him. It's because I, I was just comfortable and stuck in the spot with the Lord. I really just wanted to step out and grow closer with him and see the plan he had for me. This whole summer and summer camp, um, everything, I just really, really saw it. I saw it. God gave me the vision. God showed me my plan and my purpose. And I want to let you guys know that you guys had a plan and a purpose. God has a plan and a purpose for each and every one of you guys. I just want to let you guys know that. That's awesome. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We all really grew closer, closer with each other and with the Lord at the same time. It was so beautiful. My, my relationship with the Lord was mainly on and off, on and off over the past couple of years. I always had faith in him and believed in him, but it was, I wasn't all there before. And now that I got closer to people in Echo, which we changed the name to Elevate, Elevate Youth. Yeah, 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 come, yeah. On, come on, come on, come on. Yeah. I got closer to people I would never think of getting close to. I got closer in just ways I could never think of. I really saw something in my the people that I shared a cabin with, we all talked about our problems. We all talked about life. We all talked about facing things and just going through the storm. We all just really been through it and had a bad past. But right now, God has a plan and a purpose for us. And I just want to make that clear. It's because that is just really getting a hold of me right now. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. And lately, i just been stepping up to the plate. It's because... All I know is that God has something planned big for each and every one of us, including me. And I just want to serve the Lord with all my heart and all my mind. That's it. That's it. Awesome. Thank you, Josh. Love you, man. Great job. Proud of you. I tell you, Josh is so respectful and so hardworking, let me tell you. He takes charge. Takes charge. Okay, the next person I'm going to have is Becca De La Rosa. Come on, Becca. Hi, guys. I'm Becca. And, okay, well, obviously, I mean, okay. I'm Becca, and I'm 14. I know I look, like, 30 years old, and I have, like, three kids, but I swear I'm 14. Oh, my God. Um... So going to youth camp, I have the honor of being on the worship team. So I was like, you know, what? I'm gonna be really practice. I'm really, I'm gonna be really busy at practice, and I'm probably not gonna receive a lot because when people receive, it's mostly in worship. But being on stage, like, I'm not gonna really receive, you know. So I didn't have much like expectations, but I was like, you know what? If God touched me, you know, He touches me. But oh boy, like He touched me. Like let me tell you, He touched me. <laughs> But my experience, it was really fun. Like, it was great. Like, not to brag or anything, but I had the best cabin. Like, they respected, they respected my bedtime, let me go to sleep. And, like, just being on stage, watching other youth, like, connect with God was just so beautiful. And I just, it really touched me. And even hearing you girls talk about how worship was so amazing, I was like, <laughs> you know. But... For months, I've been dealing with believing, like, lies. And I've been dealing with this, um, lies that I, like, in, inner lies, like, lies that I tell myself, lies that other people have told me, and lies that the enemy has told me. And so the second day of camp, God told me, like, you know what, I want you to sing out to the youth that they shouldn't believe the lies that they've been told, that they matter. And I was like, okay. And he was like, but it goes for you, too stop believing the lies that you've been told like you matter and I was like you know what God I was arguing with God guys like who argues with God I was like you know what I only have like two or three lies I'm believing so I'm just like not gonna give them to you because there's only like three okay and so um so then yeah I didn't give it up and today actually today was the day that I got touched um I was 
I was worshiping and like Kaysen said, there was a bridge of leaders and Alexis was like, go walk through the bridge. And I was like, no, it's okay. And then she's like, no, like go walk through the bridge. And I was like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so like, guys, I didn't even make it through the bridge yet. And pastor prayed for me for like 10 seconds. And he looks me for like, he looks at me for like two seconds and he looks into my soul and he's like, like, he's like, stop believing the lies that you've been told. You are enough. You matter. And then he was like, do you want to speak on stage tonight? And I was like, oh, uh, he was like, okay, perfect, great. And I, I, was like, I was like, wait, where's my, where's my opinion? Where's my chance to answer? But, you know, so he was praying for me. And, like, the fact that God told me to give up my lies and then pastor, I was like, you know what? If I don't give them up tonight, I'm never going to give them up. I'm never going to let go of them. And, you know, we, I'm pretty sure we've all believed lies that we've been, like, told. Whether you're not smart enough, you're not pretty enough, like, you're not good enough. Those are lies, guys. And I have a scripture for you guys. Psalms 109, 2 through 4. It says, For wicked and deceitful mouths are opened against me, speaking against me with lying tongues. They encircle me with words of hate and act on me without cause. In return... For my love, they accuse me, but I give myself to prayer. So what that means to me, okay. yeah. that verse connects with all three of the lies. You know, you, you'll hate on yourself. Like, you're a hater on yourself, guys. Like, I know everyone is like that. And, you know, even the enemy, like, he, he has a deceitful tongue. He will tell you, you don't matter. You're not good enough. No one loves you. And I'm sure that we've all dealt with that and believed those lies. But you know what? There is a key to stopping that. And that is up to pray, just to give it to God. Instead of being mad, instead of being angry, instead of being sad, take what you're feeling, take your emotions, and just give it to God. Like, I know I had to look myself in the mirror, and I was like, I was praying, and I was like, in my, like, I was in my grandma's bathroom, and I was crying, because I was like, what am I going to say? Like, I don't know anything. And I looked at myself in the mirror, and I read this verse, and I prayed, and I was like, you know what, God? I matter. I am enough, and I will yeah. no longer awesome. believe the lies yeah. that I am being told. <laughs> so you know what, guys? Like, you just got to tell God, like, like, what's the truth? Like, what is my truth? And he will tell you. He will tell you the truth. And, you know, whatever you're going through, just give it to God, like, don't hold that burden when there's such a simple way to let go of it. And that's it. That's all I got. You are awesome. Thank you, Becca. I love you, girl. Proud of you. You did amazing. You want to preach on Sunday? Okay, thank you. All right, the last person who's going to come up and share is uh, someone that I got to know just a little bit more. And when you hear her spirit, you can... You can tell that God is, God is, God's placed something special on her life, and I know you're going to be super blessed. So help me welcome Katie Curry. Come on up, girl. Go ahead, Katie. Hi. Oh, hello. Hello. Okay. Hi. My name is Katie Curry. I am 15 years old. I'm going to be a junior in high school. <laughs> um. <laughs> so this year. We had camp, right? It was like we ended it, it ended today. But we had camp and I was the first person to sign up. And I was the first person to pay. But I honestly thought camp was gonna be a drag. Because the weeks before all of this, all like camp and like everyone, woo, camp, I would see on Instagram, Echo Youth at Lexi would post um <laughs> like five days till camp, two days till camp, and I was like, Oh Lord Jesus help me. Um, <laughs> but the weeks leading up to this, I had stopped coming to youth and I just really didn't, I, I wasn't like Kaysen said, I was in a funk and it's just, it was so ugly. I, I felt so embarrassed coming because my relationship with God was not strong at all. Like I would show up and I would be like, woo, praise the Lord. I'd be singing, worshiping, you know, and then, um, <laughs> I would listen to the message, and then we'd get into our groups, and I would put on, like a, like, a front and be like, oh, yeah, Jesus told me this, Jesus told me that, and then I would go home, and the rest of the week would be nothing. Mm -hmm. 
And, okay. That's good. So, <laughs> today was the, well, okay, so let me explain. When The first day we got there, it kind of like, when we were in worship, God just started like eating at me little by little. And just like the following days, I didn't really get anything. But today, like, I feel like everyone got something in this whole bridge situation. Like, it was so, it was different, but it wasn't a bad different. It was just, like, something we had never done before. And I was really surprised at how open everyone was to doing it. But, you know, uh, yeah. <laughs> but when I was in this tunnel, uh, there's two people on each side of you. And you walk in. And people, like, I think it was Lexi and Sydney. They laid their hands on me, and I just started crying. I started bawling my eyes out. Like, I just couldn't, I couldn't handle it. I don't know what happened. And then, I, like, they stopped praying for me, and I walked to Isaac, and I was like, oh, shoot, it's Isaac. <laughs> like, <laughs> something's going to happen. So I walked over here, and Isaac just, like, put his hand on me, and I, like, broke completely. And that's when Jesus stepped in and was like, hey, sis, you need to get it together like regen needs you i'm on the regen team and I, that was such a mess i would not come and i was the yeah it was such a mess anyway <laughs> like i would i wouldn't come and then today it was just like it it spoke to me so much because god was not my top priority let alone in my top five in my top five list and i feel like that's not just me Every, I feel like, not everyone, <laughs> I'm not trying to come for you guys, um, a lot of people put on a front when they come to church. They put on a front, and they're here, and they're loving Jesus, and they're praying, and everything, and then when they leave, it's like they go back to their old ways. That's good. Very good. And um, I had a problem with trusting him, and that's what led me to my downfall personally, is because at home I wouldn't pray, I wouldn't do anything. And, like, I wanted more and more of him, but my heart wasn't fully in it because I could not trust him. And I have a scripture. It's um, Jeremiah 28, 13. It says, and you will seek me and find me when you search for me with all of your heart. I just encourage you to please give him a chance because I forgot who said it, but this past week at camp, someone was talking about um, asking and receiving. I think it was pastor. And he was talking about, bless you, whoever that was. <laughs> he was talking about um, <laughs> asking and receiving. And if you just ask him, you will definitely receive. But you have to be open to it because God is a gentleman. He will not push it upon you. So you need to have an open heart and an open mind. And I just want you guys to experiences love like I did. Okay. <laughs> All right. High five it, girl. Proud of you. Awesome. I like how we have, like, the same reputation, Dad. Yeah. It's like whenever it's you or if it's me, they're like, oh, you know. <laughs> Thanks, guys. I'm proud of you, man. Thank you. Thank you. It's a good reputation to have. We challenge your kids. So I always tell my region team, like, don't join the team because I'm going to force you to grow, and you're not going to like it, but trust me, it's going to work out in the end. <laughs> so, Kaysen, Katie, thank you for those words, though. That means yeah. a lot. And I'm honored to serve with you guys and to go with you guys to camp. But with that, you know, I think it's just beautiful just hearing the stories and being a part of the whole camp experience. Just seeing from even myself personally. Like, I'm going to camp, and I'm serving, and I'm, 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 I'm trying to give life. But just seeing their lives change, it changed my life. It changed my perspective. It actually elevated the way I was thinking. And even with our leaders before camp, we were like, I feel like God's changing our name. And you know that scripture when it talks about how God went to Abram and he changed his names, his changed his name because he gave him a promise. And we felt, you know what? I believe we believe that God's giving Echo Youth a promise, but he's got to change our name a little bit. Hmm. Not the the message, the foundation is the same, but the name needed to be changed. So we were said, you know what? We're part of Elevate Church. This is Elevate Church. We're the same thing. All these youth are going to come here one day and fill these seats. So we're like, you know what? Let's call it Elevate Youth. And we said we felt and we, pro we were telling God, God, you need to show up and you need to elevate these youth. And that's exactly what happened at camp. It wasn't an option. God, I mean, God's a gentleman, but he came in like a flood. And he elevated. Yeah, like right. when water rises, 
Yeah, when water rises, it elevates things. It elevates objects that couldn't with the air. It couldn't with the, the certain circumstance that we were all going through. But that's why God said, we're going to name you Elevate Youth. And not only that, but we got hats for that, guys, just to make sure that we all got the picture. No, but I want you guys to partner with us, that we're one body. We are one church. And these youth here, we're ready to rock this out. I mean, look at the house tonight. This is like an Easter, but an Echo Youth, I mean, Elevate Youth Takeover. Yeah. yeah. Woo. Wait, wait. No, but we just want to let you know. Thank you for everything you've done for all of us here, for partnering with us, for bringing your youth to Elevate Youth Camp. Lives were changed, and you get to be a part of that. All of you get to be a part of that. And in this experience tonight, thank you for giving us this platform. And thank you for elevating us, giving us the opportunity to grow. And I promise you guys that we're building up amazing youth to take over the leadership one day of this church. And we're yeah. going to take the reins and we're going right. to expand. And like next year, we're going to have like 150 youth. We're going to pack out bigger rooms. We're going to need more sponsorships. We're going to need everything we can get. And that's why we want to be Elevate, because we're unified and we're together. Awesome. Awesome. You know what I'm going to do? Because I want to talk to the parents. We're, we're already, it's only 814. We're almost done here. But I want to excuse the youth because we got a, uh, a dessert truck tonight. And uh, so we want them to go. Parents, don't worry. We're paying for them tonight. This is on us tonight for them. The rest of you pay. <laughs> Just kidding. Go ahead, guys. Um, just the youth. I'm just releasing the youth, please. And if no one can get up or move around, I just, I want to close with something. But I want to talk to you seriously and openly. And, um, and if we can be honest with them, then we should be able to be honest with ourselves. And, uh, I mean, tonight you heard from kids that are from age 12 years old to 15 years old. And God's rocking their world. And God loves you as much as he loves them. There's no difference. There's, God's a respecter of no person. What he did for them, he'll do for you. And you don't have to go to youth camp. <laughs> God will God'll meet you at home. They're almost out. I want to talk to you. Parents, <clears throat> I want you to ingrain this in your head. Because I know some of you, you have little ones, but if you're not careful, you're going to keep doing your life and doing their sports and doing their careers. It's amazing how many of our youth are, man, they're being looked at by major universities from baseball to football. I mean, these guys, they're just from soccer. Awesome. The church should be the best of the best of the best, but not at the expense of them not knowing God. Because earth is short, but heaven is forever. And so whether you have a infant or whether you have a high schooler, it matters for you to shape them. Because one day, they need to fly. And for those parents that maybe you didn't have Christ strong in your life, your kids are older and, and you didn't shape them. God's grace is awesome. His mercy is Everlasting, He says, my mercies are fresh in you every morning. Do you know that even if you have an older son right now or an older daughter that you probably weren't, you did your best, but maybe you weren't the parent I'm talking about tonight. You can easily call him and say, I just want to repent. But I want to I wanna tell you how much God loves you. You can. If you're still a parent and they're, they're older, you can still tell him, hey, I want to impart something in you. You can share with them. But for those of you that have little ones right now, I get it. You think that, okay, I'll start getting them connected to church when they're, you know, in junior high. It's sometimes a little bit too late. You know why? Because they're so hard. It's hard. 
Reaching them is hard. Oh, my God. You know, I'm just like, God, give me patience right now. You know, but, but at the same time, I also understand I'm not, I'm not goofy. I'm not dumb. I know the peer pressure they're facing. I'm constantly mis- meeting with parents or youth, and they're like down. The, the crap they tell us is like, oh, my God. If you only would hear some of the stories of what they share, and it's not to embarrass any parent. Hey, you know what? We don't have to wear a facade. We all need Jesus. All of you need Jesus. I need Jesus. We all need Jesus, right? That's why we have a Savior. But if you as a parent can't be, if you can't be forming your child when they're an infant, I know you won't form your child when they're in junior high. I know you won't. So please, parents, be responsible. God gave you a divine responsibility. Your child is not yours. Your child is God's. They're on loan to you. They're on loan. Because one day, guess what? You're going to have to do this. And boom. And they're going to be launched into destiny. So get your priorities straight. Kind of like Katie said. She said, God wasn't even in my top five. Some of us, our top five is everything but God. And it's not to shame you. It's to waken you. It's to waken us and say, God, forgive me if I've just, I'm always, or missing church on Wednesday. Like when you miss church on Wednesday, your youth miss, miss church. You, they're a product of you. So you got to show them, like, this is what it looks like. Joshua said, as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. And you start them while they're young. Alexis and Isaac would sleep on chairs in the church because my wife and I would serve. But I look at them today and I have no regret. Why are you always in church? Because they need it. That's why. Why are you always in church? Especially family. Why do you always have your kids in church? Wow, you have them there for three services? Oh my, yeah, but I look at their kids, I look at mine, and I see a, this is why. I wonder why you're going what you're going through. Because he wasn't the priority. It's not just church, it's God. Parents, if you want to get a tattoo, get Matthew 6.33 on it. You should. You should. Next Sunday, I'm going to have a tattoo artist in the parking lot. I'm going to do it. We're going to do it. We're all going to get tatted right here. But my skin is fine. That's all right. We'll work that, babe. We'll work it. We'll work it. We'll we'll just lay that bad boy down. We're going to do this thing. Listen, maybe you're here and you're saying, well, Pastor, we don't have kids. Then why don't you be a mentor? You have, you, have, you have nephews, you have nieces, you have cousins. Be the stronghold for someone else and help them. Let the stronghold of these youth be Jesus. So we have a job to do, guys, all of us. This Wednesday should not be packed only when we go to youth camp. This Wednesday should be packed every Wednesday because, parent, you're leading the way. Amen? When you want something really bad, you make it happen. You know you do. But for God, we... I'll say this again. I said this on Sunday. There is no worship without sacrifice. So if you don't sacrifice for God, that's not worship. Worship always requires sacrifice. And when you get that revelation, your perspective changes. And I taught your kids on Sunday night about perception and perspective. And when you think they're not listening, oh, no, they're listening. Because we ask them, what would you learn? And they just, boom, they repeat it. I'm like, wow, okay. I thought they were bored out of their mind. They start telling you exactly what they heard. So never underestimate your child. Because they're God, God's spirit's inside of them and changing them. Amen? So please, uh, help us help you. If today's message impacted you in any way, and you want to help us spread the gospel with a financial gift, text the number below and we know that someone's life will be changed the same way that yours was today.